Well, right now, I am in Washington, D.C. at Arlington National Cemetery. We, we've done some videos here before. I uh, did it kind of like a general overview and went to some of the presidential graves. I've done a couple other videos where we went to some of the more notable figures from World War II. And uh, right now, I'm standing in front of the Women's Military Memorial here at Arlington. So, uh, in this episode, we're going to look at some of the more notable women who are buried here at Arlington. Have some friends with me uh, that are going to, to help us out uh, along the way. Oh, and one thing, just so that we're clear uh, before this video gets started, this is the strap to a camera bag. This is not a man purse. Uh, anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, start hiking Arlington here. So uh, we're going to start off here in the, the Women's Military Memorial. It seems like a, a good place to start if we're doing a video about women here at Arlington. And uh, with me today, I have Scott and Jen from the channel Walk With History. Uh, hey Jen's been here a lot more than I have, and basically I'm just borrowing her brain uh, and making myself look smarter. So anyway, uh, we're going to, to kind of uh, make our way through this museum. And Naval Aviator, yes. what years? Naval Aviator, 1999 to 2006. Okay, 99 to 2006, did three deployments in Iraq? Yes. Also, Scott yep. is a graduate of the Naval Academy. Yep. So I'm, I'm surrounded by people who are way cooler than me today. <laughs> As you walk into the museum, they have this wall uh, that has some pictures of, of women who served with the military in the 18th and 19th century. So it wasn't as common, but there were some cases. Uh, so for example, this woman right here, uh, her name is Caddy Brownell. Uh, she was a color bearer for the 5th Rhode Island Infantry. Uh, and then most people would recognize this woman here. That is Clara Barton, uh, founder of the American Red Cross. Uh, this is a woman that we've talked about in a prior video whenever we were at uh, the Medal of Honor Museum down in Chattanooga. Uh, this is Dr. Mary Edwards Walker, who is the only woman to have ever received the Medal of Honor. And uh, this is her cane. Here's a, another display with a lot more artifacts that they have here in the museum. Uh, so as World War I and especially World War II roll around, we start seeing an ever-increasing role of uh, women in the military. So like in World War II, you would have had the, the Women's Army Corps uh, or you would have had the Waves. Okay, so here we can see a Marine uniform that was tailored for a female. Also here is one for the Waves. So World War II, you're primarily seeing women fulfilling roles uh, like as uh, nurses or uh, stateside as, as pilots, you know, flying planes from one part of the country to another, or as uh, radio operators, all kinds of important roles that uh, helped with the overall war effort. This display here is kind of getting more into the modern times and uh, the role that, that women have played in our armed services. So here is kind of neat. This is kind of like a progression of, uh, you know, firsts for women. So uh, 1980, we have the first Hispanic woman military pilot. Uh, 1996, the first African-American woman USAF pilot. Let's see, we get all the way down to 2020 with Joanne Bass, where it says that uh, she was the first Asian American to hold the highest United States Air Force enlisted position. All right, so Scott from Walk With History. So I was walking around and I, I told JD and my wife that um, Lieutenant JG Jeanette Gracie Shin, she was actually a chaplain on my second ship. So I did a full tour and a deployment with Lieutenant Shin. She was a chaplain on my second ship. Just kind of really neat to see her here memorialized as the, uh, the first Buddhist military chaplain in the, in, across any service, pretty neat. Ok, 
Okay, so we just got out of the Women's Military Memorial and uh, we're gonna make our way up to the Arlington House, which has been closed every single time that I've been here. Uh, it's opened up after its renovations now. But uh, anyway, gonna hit a few other grave sites uh, along the way. We are standing at a spot that we've visited before here at Arlington. Uh, this is the, the grave of JFK. And if we're talking about notable women, well, next to him is his wife, Jackie. And uh, th this woman had a, a very tragic life. If you look over here, uh, buried next to them is their infant son, Patrick. Uh, Patrick died about 15 weeks before JFK was assassinated. And then over here, uh, you can see uh, another grave of an infant of the Kennedys. Uh, very sad. Here's another notable woman here at Arlington. Uh, this is the grave of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was a Supreme Court Justice. Uh, now, Ginsburg was a very polarizing figure. Uh, she was considered to be really one of the most liberal members uh, of the Supreme Court. Uh, but something that I, that I think is, is worth noting is that uh, she was friends with somebody who was considered to be the most conservative on the Supreme Court, and that was Antonin Scalia. They traveled together, spent New Year's together. Uh, so in an age when you know we have so much division over politics, I, I think it's admirable that these two were friends. All right, and then uh, as you can see right here behind this grave up on the hill, well, there is the Arlington House, which is where we're headed next. Okay, we are on our way up to the Arlington House, which is uh, on the other side of this shrub. And uh, on the way, we have the grave of a woman named Mary Randolph. Uh, now, Mary Randolph was a direct descendant of Pocahontas, and she was related to Thomas Jefferson in some way. And uh, she was also the cousin to Robert E. Lee's father-in-law. So there are some family connections here. But uh, she had uh, created a, a cookbook, which uh, was supposed to be highly influential. Uh, but one thing that she's really notable for here at Arlington, uh, she is the very first person to have been buried on this property. So here we are at Lee House, or Arlington House. And what is so amazing about this house is this is Robert E. Lee's home. This is his plantation. Now he inherits this house through his wife who is a descendant of George Washington and that's why you have such a great view and location here because this is George Washington's land. His children, through adopted children, inherit this land and Robert E. Lee's wife is a descendant so they build their home here. But once the Civil War breaks out, Robert E. Lee is gone and Mary Custis is left here on her own. The Union gives her a heads up and lets them know we're coming for this home. So she packs up in two days and gets as much as she can, as she can out of this home. She leaves behind her enslaved woman, Selena, though. Selena Gray packs up all of George Washington's relics. And the things we have today, the tent in the American Revolution Museum and the tent at Yorktown, is because of Selena Gray. Now, afterwards, you have the Union soldiers who come here and a lot of them who served with Robert E. Lee, who are very upset with Robert E. Lee, find, feel that he's a traitor. So they decide when they need a place to bury the war dead that it's Robert E. Lee's fault that those men are dead and they're going to bury them here at Arlington. And they do one even better. They know Mary Custis' favorite spot on this plantation is her garden. So they bury the first men in her garden so she can never come back and look at this in favor again. And that's how Arlington becomes Arlington National Cemetery. June was just talking about the view from up here at Arlington House. And uh, I'll tell you what, that's no lie. It is quite uh, the, the scenic spot here. So uh, you can see and just right across the Potomac, there's the present-day Lincoln Memorial. Then you have the Washington Memorial and then the Capitol there in the background uh, there across the Potomac River. Yeah, so I can see why they picked this as the spot to, to build this home. Okay, so we just walked into the Arlington House here. And uh, we're just going to give a, a quick walk through and there's some annoying beeping going on in the background I don't even know what the heck that is but anyway uh, here's a picture of Robert E. Lee and his wife Mary Custis Lee 
And uh, as it says there, they were married in this very room on June 30th of 1831. Uh, also says here that, that some of the enslaved workers uh, were married in this room as well. So this is kind of like the, the spiritual center of the house uh, right here in the family parlor. Here we're looking at the front parlor and uh, Jen mentioned how whenever Union troops were, were moving in towards the Lee house, uh, they evacuated and brought a lot of you know family heirlooms and stuff that belonged to Washington with them, which included uh, the, the bed that Washington died in. But uh, that would have happened in May of 1861. As you saw outside, we're right here next to the Capitol. So uh, Arlington House was kind of on the front line. And uh, throughout the war, the officers tried to kind of protect this house, but a lot of soldiers um, all looted it or uh, graffitied it or things like that just because they uh, wanted retribution for what they saw as a, uh, a grievous wrong with the Confederacy uh, trying to break away from the United States. Well, apparently Robert E. Lee shot himself a pretty nice old buck, too. So, uh, apparently, this room right here is uh, where Mary Custis Lee was doing some painting uh, whenever she received news that Union troops were on the way. Hmm. All right, we've moved into the last room here in the Arlington House before we go back outside. This is Robert E. Lee's plantation office. Now, when the Civil War broke out, uh, President Lincoln initially offered command of the U.S. Army to Robert E. Lee. And it's thought that in the early morning hours of April 20th of 1861, uh, in this room, Robert E. Lee wrote out his resignation to the U.S. Army. Uh, so. He, he was not only changing the, the course of his own life, but, but also the course of American history right here in this room. The building that we are looking at right here is the South Slave Quarters. And uh, earlier, Jen was talking about this woman right here, uh, Selena Gray. Uh, she was born into slavery in uh, December of 1823 and uh, learned to read and write and was a personal maid for Mary Custis Lee. And uh, she was married to this man right here, Thornton Gray. Uh, Thornton and Selena got married in the exact same room that Robert E. Lee and Mary were uh, wed in that we showed just a moment ago. But uh, yeah. Can't talk about Arlington without talking about all of the people who lived here, including Selena Gray. Uh, after the war, uh, their family ended up settling on a few acres in Alexandria. I've just moved inside of the South Slave Quarters here. And uh, before we start painting too rosy of a picture about the life of the enslaved here at Arlington, uh, think about where we just were inside of Arlington House and then look at the size of this room. This is where uh, Selena and Thornton Gray had their home and also where they raised two boys and six girls in this room. So the, the kids would sleep upstairs in the loft uh, where if we were to go up there, there's not even enough room to stand up. Oh, and in addition, we also have a cat. Well, this is the grave of Rear Admiral Grace Hopper. Uh, so as you can see there, Grace Hopper served in World War II, Korea, and uh, Vietnam. And uh, she originally uh, was rejected uh, whenever she signed up to serve in World War II because of her, her size. Uh, she was a rather uh, petite woman. And uh, ended up persisting and was in the Naval Reserve. And uh, Grace Hopper is pretty legendary for her work in uh, computer programming. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you've ever heard the term debugging, well, 
that comes from Grace Hopper. Uh, in 1945, they were having a problem with one of their machines. They opened it up and there was a big old moth in there. So they, they took the moth out and debugged the machine. Uh, she also was part of a team that ran numbers for uh, the plutonium bomb that was dropped on Nagasaki. Uh, now, something that Scott pointed out to me, so Grace Hopper was a rear admiral, and over here, this individual, uh, Joseph McGoldrick, was also a rear admiral, but notice the spelling is different. Here is R-A-D-M, and here, also a rear admiral, R-D-M-L. Well, Grace Hopper was a one-star rear admiral, and this individual was a two-star, hence the difference. But yeah, it's another one of the, the famous women here at Arlington. The section of the cemetery that I'm in right now is currently undergoing renovation, so don't get too spun up whenever you don't see green grass here. But uh, this is the grave of Juliet Hopkins. Uh, now, Juliet Hopkins uh, kind of became well known in the Confederacy. Uh, in November of 1861, her husband, uh, whose name was Judge Hopkins, was appointed to oversee all of the Alabama hospitals. The, the couple ended up liquidating most of their real estate holdings so that they could contribute money to the medical needs of the Confederacy. Anyway, throughout the war, uh, she uh, you know, converted some tobacco factories into hospitals and uh, really got involved in the medical care of Confederate soldiers who had been wounded. Uh, this extended all the way out to the battlefield. She actually sustained two hip wounds at the Battle of Seven Pines in 1862 while uh, tending to the wounded right in the middle of this conflict zone. And uh, it was during this time period that she was given the nickname the Florence Nightingale of the South. And uh, she's buried right here at Arlington. Anita McGee. Now the story of Anita McGee is really fascinating to me. Uh, she received her medical degree from Columbian College, uh, went on to John Hopkins University for uh, further education, and had a private practice right here in Washington, D.C. One of the, the few uh, female doctors who was practicing at the time. Uh, she was the founder and director for the uh, Daughters of the American Revolution Hospital Corps and she uh, trained volunteer nurses for uh, Army and Navy service whenever the Spanish-American War broke out in 1898. Uh, now, Anita McGee was the first female surgeon in the U.S. Army and uh, later went on to establish a permanent nursing corps, which is known as the Army Nurse Corps. Pretty amazing woman. This is the grave of Jane Delano, and uh, this is a really neat woman who really dedicated her life to helping people. Uh, she traveled, uh, you know, in different parts of the country uh, whenever there were typhoid epidemics and was, was helping people out there and uh, was active with the American Red Cross. And uh, it was her organizational efforts that really got the, uh, the nurses prepared for America's entry into World War I. There were several thousand nurses that ended up going overseas uh, and were, were prepared largely in part to the efforts, uh, due to the efforts of Jane Delano. Uh, she ended up dying in France while on a Red Cross mission over there and the uh, Army Quartermaster Corps arranged for her remains to be brought back here to Arlington. And it's appropriate that Jane Delano is laid to rest right here. Because right here where I'm standing, well, this is the nurses section of Arlington. I've been to Arlington several times now, and uh, I'm a, a little bit embarrassed and ashamed to admit that until today, I didn't know that there was a nurses section here. Uh, what we are looking at, kind of tucked away in these trees, is a monument that was erected in 1938 
uh, that honors the, the nurses. And then down at the bottom, there's an inscription. And it says, to commemorate devoted service to country and humanity by Army, Navy, and Air Force nurses. So yeah, nurses are, are special people. And they their job is insanely difficult. I don't think I could do it. And uh, I love that there's a, a section here for the nurses who have served and a, a monument that, uh, that honors that service. Well, those were just a few of the notable graves of the women here at Arlington National Cemetery. Uh, funny thing, this wasn't our original plan today. We were going to do something else. Those plans fell through. But this is a, a video that I've wanted to do for a while. So I'm glad that those plans failed so that we could come here and uh, visit these graves and, and honor the, the service women who have done so much to serve our country. Uh, but anyway, you've seen Scott and Jen from Walk With History uh, here on, on this episode. Their channel is, is really, really good. One of my favorites. Uh, I'm going to put a link to it in the description. And uh, they've been walking these grounds and filming as well. So I'll also put a link to the video that they have uh, from right here at uh, Arlington National Cemetery. If you ever get a chance, come to this place.